and welcome to another exciting episode of Poet the Poet. Yes, we're still in business here, traveling around doing these marvelous poetry and music performance shows. Oh, I almost forgot, my name is Robert Dunn. I, I'm the host um, because uh, they uh, held a gun to my back, but um, I'm actually starting to enjoy it, hosting the show, I mean. Um, we have... Uh, <laughs> We have two marvelous poets uh, for this evening's entertainment. We have Victoria Crosby over here, and we have Cliff Leidner, the scientific poet, and you'll find, more, oh, find out more about that later. Um, but before we get into things, I want to thank Glenn and the gang at the School Street Deli in Glen Cove. It's on School Street, hence the name, which is kind of nice. A marvelous little place on the North Shore of Long Island, and they were very kind to let us uh, set up all our uh, all our equipment and take over the uh, the crow's nest here, and so we're very grateful to them. And while I'm in a grateful mood, I think I want to get spiritual for a moment and do a little spiritual poem, which follows, I suppose, the twenty-first bass song for something we all miss. By the waters of South Bronx Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept. Over three game series left unswept, with no end in sight to the cosmic psych job known on the sports page as the baseball strike. Our holy places, Yankee, Shea, Wrigley, Fenway, all stand bereft, desolate and calcified, for no one is left, pitching them high and inside. If I forget the oak candlestick, may my right hand forget its slider. May my curveball cleave to the babe roof of my mouth. Ouch. May those tobacco stains never be cleansed from my sleeve. May my Louisville slugger become part of an end table. May my ticket scalpers become amateur muggers if I forget the old foul line. May I never again taste red hots. May I never be boxed up with owners who pull the socially acceptable boner of singing psalms to free market economy while cursing the name of free agentry. May I never spend time with players who provide ammunition for gainsayers by asking millions for doing on a bench what my grandmother does in the park for nothing. But I'm wrong there, at least she feeds the pigeons. If I forget the national pastime, I suppose I can always watch hockey. And if I'm really lucky, the hockey fans will spare me their cries of, sing us a song, sing us a song of baseball in a puckish tone of voice. And please don't tell me they're on strike too. Well. Enough spirituality, now we switch to charm. And we have Victoria Crosby, who is from uh, Cheshire, England, which ex right. explains the smile. That's right. Right. Um, she's not going to disappear or anything. No, but, I'm uh, not. That does, she has a background in uh, education, a Master of Science in Elementary Education, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but that hasn't stopped her from writing poems. No. And, no. Uh, you'll, you'll find out in a moment. Uh, she teaches piano, she <laughs> writes poems, she writes song parodies, she. Uh, is writing a poetry book dedicated to to Elvis. That's right. Elvis yeah. Presley, as I understand. Um, why Elvis? Because <laughs> I like Elvis. I've always liked um, Elvis. What is it about Elvis that you really like? Oh, do you really want me to go into the detail? And I oh, right. This is the this, young Elvis. This is this is a family show. I keep <laughs> I keep forgetting. So. Um, well, when I read you my first poem, I think it will explain to you. You mean this one? This one. Yes. Ah, okay. Why don't we get yeah. right into that? That's okay. A, this is called From the Mersey Sound to the Long Island Sound. When in my teens I used to ride the buses and trains around Merseyside, I'd go and watch the bands perform. I'd see Scylla Black and Rory Storm. I rode the ferry across the Mersey each day, long before I'd heard Jerry Marsden play. It was not approved of in our house to speak with the accent of a scouse, that nasal sing-song Liverpudlian voice was not the Cheshire people's choice. And the places where those bands would play were in areas where one should stay away. My sister, she would break the rule and sneak out of her class at school and take the ferry to Liverpool. She'd go to the cavern on her lunch hour. I saw the show at night at the new Brighton Tower. We'd go to see the Beatles when they were still known as the Quarrymen. Then the Silver Beatles they became. But hey, who cares what's in a name? black leather jackets and jeans they wore and sang the songs I'd heard before. American standards, rhythm and blues, yet they could never fill Elvis's shoes. But before those lads had become real well known, off to America I had flown. I knew in the future I would be far away from Wallasey. All my life I planned someday 
to make it to the USA. The music there spoke to my soul, that down and dirty rock and roll. And to go to Graceland was my goal. So it was with a great surprise to hear that those four local guys had the number one hit throughout the land, and they'd become a famous band. On Ed Sullivan, I watched them play. I'd driven by the plaza in New York that day and seen the screaming fans watching for their faces to appear on the highest floor or to catch them sneaking out a back door. As I look back, it's amazing to me that they reach such celebrity. Yet by playing original music, it seems that they attained their American dreams. And eventually, as the years went by, I can tell you, so did I. I went to Graceland because, you see, that was the American dream for me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Does that so, explain? Sounds, yes. like, sounds like some <laughs> awfully big blue yeah. suede shoes. Yes, so yes. I, I would say. Um, uh, Cliff, have you ever snuck out of a back door after a performance? No, no. I've had to sit down, so uh, I could duck flying objects, though. <laughs> oh, I see. I, I, I've, I've snuck out of a few windows. How about you, Victoria? Did you ever sneak out of a back door? I don't think so. Uh, actually, I think if you had, you would have remembered. Okay. It. Right. Uh, what else have you got in there? Okay, I've got something a little shorter uh -huh. uh, called Single. Mm -hmm. I wrote this for a friend of mine who yeah. is single. Mm -hmm. There are no knights in shining armor, no prince on a white horse, just the walking wounded hurt by marriage and divorce. Some limp along life's highway with invisible crutches. They are the ones still caught in their mother's clutches. You wait around for Mr. Right, and when he comes along, the two of you begin to fight. He's another Mr. Wrong. We all carry our own baggage that cannot be seen. Don't waste your time waiting to be treated like a queen. Strive for your own potential. That will give meaning to your life. Don't make your one ambition just to be a wife. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have to confess that being a wife was never, not quite one never of, my, to you, one of my ambitions anyway. Uh, <laughs> Um, what are your ambitions? Ooh, well, after I've written my uh, book of uh, poems about Elvis's life, which uh -huh. I'm working on, um, I would like to do a book of spiritual poems, which I'm also working on, uh -huh. and some parodies and... And some spiritual Elvis poems. Funny, and, oh yes, yeah. those too. <laughs> Might as well cover all the bases. Cover all the bases, right. I've got uh -huh. a few books in me. What bases uh, does your next poem cover? Um, Sort of a little male bashing. That's okay. Oh, Sorry, guys. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't see if I can. Uh, if I can uh, stop you, uh, uh, Anthony. Would you hit the blue switch, please? <laughs> right, okay. No, all right. Do your poem. Okay. <laughs> this is called the Fall of Man. The blue switch. Yeah. A dismal, damp November day. The trees are bare. The clouds are gray. The sky is unpredictable at this time of year. Moody and changeable. The sun may soon appear yet all too brief the momentary glow. The day is metaphorical for the men I know, like the men who fill the branches of my family tree, cold and unreliable they all seem to be. Father, brother, husband, son, they've let me down, every one. There is one father I can count on. There is only one son, for God has never let me down. I know he never will. And behind the clouds of dark despair, the sun is shining still. God will never let me down. I'd stop to think, and then I realized that he's the one responsible for men. Do I detect a slight <laughs> irony a cynicism in, there. in that one? Um, do, the, uh, do these things, uh, is it the irony that triggers off most of the poems, even the spiritual ones? Or? Um, no, the spiritual ones come from a different place. Right. Now, you showed me a set Would earlier, you like to a, a, a pair, a twin set here. I'd like you to just run right through the two of them. The trophy one? Yeah, the trophies. Okay, the Let's trophies. Have the trophies. A tro which would you like first, the trophy wife or the trophy husband? Oh, ladies first. Ladies first. Is that the way they're supposed to be read? It doesn't really matter. Oh, all right. It's, it's both points of view. That, that's sexist courtesy you yes. just had okay. there. Yes, okay, thank it. you. <laughs> this is trophy yeah. wife. I want to be a trophy wife. It's something I've dreamed of all of my life. How pleasant to be showered with glittering trinkets. You may think it's sexist, but I think it's a wonderful way for an old man to show his appreciation of me, don't you know? I want to be a trophy wife. I want to be pampered the rest of my life. I want someone who'll leave all his money to me. 
and not make me sign something prenuptially. One who won't leave me his money in trust, but it expire quickly and turn to ashes and dust. I want to be a trophy wife, and I could shorten any man's life. And if in bed the old man can't make it, then I suppose I'd have to fake it. Of course, at my age, I'd have to find someone who's ancient and legally blind. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> Why well, I didn't mean you. <laughs> what about the other side? Of the well, are you a rich old man? Uh, not yet. <laughs> the other one is the trophy husband. Uh, my friends love this one. I'll bet. <laughs> my women friends, of course. Of course. <laughs> I want a trophy husband, someone who's younger than me, a man whose brains could win him a prize, a handsome man with bedroom eyes, as sexy as a lover should be. I want to walk into a party with a good-looking man on my arm, a man who can win the hearts of the crowd with his wit and his smile and his charm. I want to see the looks on their faces when they see he has muscles in all the right places. To have such a man would really be great. Of course, I'd have to make sure he was straight. Men in their 50s and 60s marry young girls of 23. If men can have trophy spouses, then women, why shouldn't we? Um, I don't know. I, th I think I think there's something in the uh, in the gray book. Oh, the, uh, there's that, a rule of, yes. against, against it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway, Victoria Crosby. I think I'm gonna uh, gonna slip off now. Okay. And uh, unless you've got some uh, little short thing in there that might uh, that might make people forget what you're looking for in a man. Oh, <laughs> would you like something spiritual? Yes, that'd be nice. While you're um, while you're dishing up a spiritual. How about this yeah. one? I'd like, to, I'd like to know, do they have any uh, opinions of what you're writing back in uh, Cheshire? Um, do they? Well, I've sent some of my work back to my family and friends uh -huh. there, yes. They kind of like it. Well, that's, that's good to know. Yeah. All right, now let's get spiritual again. Spiritual. Okay, I, I've done quite a few spiritual poems, and uh, this is one that I, I wrote uh, after reading the book, um, The Road Less Traveled. Uh -huh. This is called Which Way? Life's about choices, the paths that we take, our own inner voices, the decisions we make. We've been given options, turn left or turn right. We can face all our problems or simply take flight. We choose our direction, we can turn either way. Life's not black or white, it's just shades of gray. Sometimes it's clear what's wrong or what's right, then we must choose to retreat or to fight. We exercise judgment all through the day. To find your direction, it helps when you pray. Ah. Nice. Well, one thing we can pray for is uh, more poets like uh, Victoria Crosby, I <laughs> would think. You. And uh, she also hosts a reading here in the, uh, in the School Street Deli. And uh, write us and we'll tell you about it. Uh, in the meantime, we'll be back in a moment with Cliff Blinder, the scientific poet. So stay with us. <laughs>